Now that we've done the submachine gun versus series, I wanted to go over the really in-depth stats, which I had access to, I just chose not to put it in the versus series, so you know, I didn't want to confuse you guys, didn't want to put too many numbers in front of you, didn't want to be too nerdy with it. And also there's a great chance for all the submachine guns to be versed against each other as a class, so you can really see which one is the best in which category. So let's start off with capacity. P90 comes out top here with 50, MP5 at 30, all the way at the bottom there. So as you can see, you know, none of the submachine guns have a, you know, weak capacity like it was in Black Ops where pretty much every single submachine gun had um, 20 bullets. Uh, so it's not like that here. You get a submachine gun, you're getting at least a minimum of 30 bullets. And you got guns like the MP7 and the P90 which go all the way to 40 and 50. So you know those guns don't even need extended mags. That's a you know huge bonus for those two guns. And even the PP90 M1 at 36. Onwards to damage. All the submachine guns up close kill in three bullets. How I get the time to kill is based on their fire rate and the fact that they're all high damage submachine guns up close. Uh, but within that, uh, UMP does come out on top at 49, the PM9 and the MP7 are at 35, but because a player's health is at 100, whether it's 35 or 49, the guns will kill in 3 bullets, unless the other player has been damaged, and in that case, yeah, the UMP will have an advantage over the MP7 and the PM9. And further away, uh, the damage for all of the submachine guns are also um, 20 which basically means it's a five hit kill from the furthest distance but the UMP and the PP 90 M1 are at 17 damage and that means they're a six hit kill from furthest away and considering the recoil the submachine guns have you know six <laughs> six bullets is a lot of bullets to put into someone from that sort of distance and something to note is that the range proficiency doesn't actually help in this um, category where range, where the range proficiency helps is the mid distance, somewhere between close and far. In that middle distance, basically like having stopping power, and that allows the gun to kill in one less bullet, but that's only in the mid distance. So onwards to the RPM. The PM9 comes out with the highest fire rate at 1090. The UMP comes out with the slowest, but they're all, they're all actually really quick, considering the highest firing assault rifle is at 780. So the UMP at 750 isn't too far behind. The next category is time to kill. We've already been through all of these, uh, so I'm just going to let you look at them on the screen. And I'm going to repeat what I said in the last episode, is that the PM9, yeah, it kills the quickest, but the recoil is uncontrollable. So you're really going to pretty much want to avoid that gun and look at everything below it. Next up is the raise time. Uh, in case you didn't know what raise time is, it's basically when your weapon is away and you bring it up, you raise the weapon, right? So if you're calling in a kill streak, and then, you know, the weapon's not in your hand, you bring the weapon into your hand, and here we have the times for how long it basically takes. P90 is the quickest, along with the UMP. MP7 and the MP5 are pretty much right there with those two, so those four are really quick. But the PM9, and especially the PP90M1, really, really slow. So you're going to make sure you're behind cover when you're calling in kill streaks, stuff like that. And of course, the drop time is when you put the weapon away, how long it takes you to, you know. So if you're switching to your secondaries, how long would it take for your primary to be put away? And this is actually an area which I will give credit to the PM9 for because it's it is the quickest, but the MP7 and the MP5 are right there with it. So you know, still not really a logical choice to use the PM9 unless you're messing around, which I actually like to do a lot. And then at the other end of the scale, we have the UMP and the P90, which are pretty slow at um, being dropped. So uh, they're still good for rushing, but you know, if it's, if you somehow manage to run out of bullets, then yeah, you might lose that one v one situation. And now onto the reload times. Uh, this is in a really important area because if you're not shooting, you know, or if you're done shooting, I should say, you're going to be reloading. And if you don't have sleight of hand, this is going to be really important. So the UMP has a reload time of 2.5 seconds. But something to note with the UMP is you can also do reload cancel. So although I don't have the exact time, I can imagine it being something like 1.8 seconds with reload cancel. That's how I always do it anyway. As soon as the 
bullets are in the chamber I just press sprint and it cancels the reload animation and on the other end of the scale we have the PP90 M1 at 3.03 seconds along with the PM9 I should say and the MP7 uh, yeah they're actually <laughs> all those three are really slow at reloading I think with the yeah with those last three you'll want to look to put on sleight of hand definitely and so onwards to the last category which is going to be recoil uh, this is uh, sort of more opinionated than fact from my time playing with the guns um, you know I've got most of the cameras for most of the guns and I've golded the MP7 and P90 so I do have a lot of playing time and this is how I would rate the recoil so the sort of system I've implemented here is one being the least recoil and five being the most the MP7 has little little to no recoil so I had to give it a one the PP90 M1 up close it really doesn't have recoil but I guess further away it, you do start to see the gun wandering off the UMP and the P90 they have moderate but controllable recoil uh, the MP5 is kind of weird it kind of jumps around every now and again so it's not really that consistent but maybe if you put on a silencer it would cancel out the muzzle flash and maybe that's still alright and then of course the <laughs> the mother of all recoil guns the PM9 this thing kicks all over the place the muzzle flash makes it impossible to see it oh man it's horrible it's just horrible it's a good thing my uh, scale only goes to five because i would give that a way way higher score and onwards to the moment of truth the overall gun rank now this is again opinionated but i, I think at the number one spot shouldn't be opinionated mp7 is the best submachine gun it cannot be argued it has a great iron sight it has 40 rounds, doesn't need extended mags, still recommend putting extended mags on it anyway. It has good fire rate, high damage, decent reload speed, but you know with sleight of hand it just becomes a monster. So it's definitely the best submachine gun. And then the P90 and the PP90M1, now these can go back and forth. Both of them have their advantages in certain situations. P90 has, you know, 50 rounds. But the PP90 uh, does more damage up close. I'm not sure further away, but and then below those two we have the MP5 and the UMP. And again, these are another two which can go back and forth. UMP feels a little easier to use, but it does deal less damage further away. But on the counter to that, it deals a little, tiny little bit more damage up close. But because of the fire rate, it kills slower. So, you know, they go back and forth, those two. So again, those two can be swapped based on the player last but actually you know it is the least it is the least uh is the pm9 horrid gun horrible just don't use it unless you want to have jokes you know and it looks cool i guess you hold it in one hand a bit of a gangster gun but no just just don't do it kids just don't do it i hope you enjoyed that guys i know it was a bit of a long episode but this is for the you know i guess the hardcores only you know if you want to really go in depth into the gun stats Next episode is going to be the assault rifle matchup between the ACR and the M4A1. So remember guys, make sure you subscribe, leave some feedback, uh, we really do appreciate all of that, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.